Good morning. How are we all doing? Welcome to twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uploads. How you doing? How's your day? It's Tuesday. Welcome back. If you don't know who we are, my name is Graham. Alright, and I am joined by the man that we call Bibi. Alright, Bib. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Welcome to the show. <laughs> anyway, welcome uh, to twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uploads. Uh, did anyone see the go live post today? I, I did. I did YouTube thumbnail face, uh, but in motion. <laughs> slash Kevin from Home Alone. Take, take whichever one you want, want it to be. Ow, that, I just slap, slap stuff in the face. <laughs> uh, ow. Uh, anyway, how's things, babe? Yeah, good. Good. I, I was in bed last night for, I'm not joking, eight o'clock. I think I felt must have fell asleep about quarter to nine, nine o'clock. You know, just I was fucked, Graham. I, I mean, that, fucked. don't know why. That's what you no get. Idea. I mean, that's absolute heartbreak, baby. Um, in bed for eight. The uh, back for blood beta finished at eight. <laughs> I mean, cause and effect, right there, ladies and gentlemen. The back for blood beta disappeared at eight o'clock yesterday, and baby uh -huh. was in bed for eight. So there you go. Oh, Is we that... finished it, didn't we? You know what I mean? Second time round. Well, it was. It it wasn't necessarily the second time round. It was the first time round because I backed out after the first one, so you could join in. Then when you left, we ended up completing it. Like we finished the we finished the entire act, and yeah, it was it was class. I can't wait to play more of that. I can't how long? Wait to play how more. long does it take to finish the entire act? Because I jumped in for the first two, three bits. Yeah, it's ten acts, and it took two hours. We was I think I streamed for like two hours forty minutes. I think all together, including the intro, the first the introduction, and then the first level, which I then backed out of, and then jumped back in with you. So yeah, it probably took about two hours to get through the entire thing. So I jumped off for like three back-to-back -back meetings. So I didn't watch any of it. As I was jumping off, though, I saw that you somehow fell into some hole thing after being hit by something else. The bots tried to come and yeah. rescue you and fell into the holes and died. And then you didn't have any bots. So was it just you and that and Elias guy all the way through then till the end? Yeah. So me and Elias started, obviously, when you because it was three of us. And then you left. And then it's like people can just join whenever. So as soon as the level finishes, it gives a chance for somebody else to just jump in. If they like press quick match or whatever, they'll just jump into whatever is open at the time. So we carried on and got to the end with four people. We died on the last boss, but we started continues. But one person dropped out, so we had to finish it with a bot. So there's three people and then a bot at the end when we, when we completed it. Uh, well, you, you was playing with like three bots when I was in the game. Uh, yeah, to be fair, I actually, I want to play through it again. I want to I go through it again because I didn't like that Elias dude. He was just running forward, oh. pistoling, and just like grabbing all of the loot, full-on loot goblin, uh, and then just, just getting in the way of everything. There'd be a, there'd be a yeah. corridor, a bottleneck, where you can pummel all the fucking zombies. If you, you basically stand there as a firing like squad, but no, he just ran in front of the bottleneck and then started killing everything. So he was finishing the game yeah. with a hundred kills, but it's like, you're in the fucking way. Move dickhead. Yeah. Well, you just end up shooting them. Like it's like a, I don't want to say it's like a tactical shooter game because it genuinely isn't. But if there's four of you and there's hordes of zombies, someone will take point A, B, C, and then you'd have someone who's helping you provide ammo and stuff like that. It's, it's not a tactical game, but you can play it like that. But when someone's just, like you say, in the front of a bottleneck and they are just shooting everything that comes along, chances are they're going to die as well because it does have friendly fire as well. So it's they're, they're putting themselves at yeah, risk. Yeah, he'd have found that out because I kept shooting him. <laughs> I was like, do you know what? You're in the way. Yeah. Fuck it. I'm, you're literally yeah. running across the line of fire. You're going to get shot. I'm, I mean, the first couple of times, I'm like, oh, nearly shot you. Oh, nearly... Okay. Okay. Seriously. Fuck it. <laughs> Take yeah, that. Take that. that. Fuck them, fuck them. If they want to play it like that, that that's absolutely how they want to play. But it does absolutely mean it want to make me load up back, uh, back for blood. Um, left for dead, left for dead again. It absolutely wants. Uh, it makes me want to load that bad boy up and just go through it again. Both of them, they're both fantastic games, and this is literally everything that you could take from the first two games. I mean, we're doing this knowing full well that we've got this conversation coming up again in a second. Everything from Left for Dead one and two, and then putting it into this game. I cannot wait for it. Well, that's quite a good segue. Uh, let's jump, before we jump back, we do have more Bad for Blood, uh, Back for Blood news. Obviously, you will have seen it uh, if you've checked out our social media content. Obviously, we do share what our lead story of the day, and that will be Back for Blood. So not only did we stream it yesterday, but we have more news on that. Before we do jump into the news first, though, Ultimate Gaming, good morning. Thank you very much for joining the Discord. If you want to join our Discord, exclamation mark, Discord is the link uh, you will get in the chat. That will give you the link through to the ice cream van. That's our ice cream uploads Discord. So in there, you can do everything from sharing 
sharing pictures of your food, which is what I was doing yesterday, right <laughs> through to sharing news to help shave our show or shape our show as it should be. Um, you can share news stories for us to discuss on the scoop within there. Uh, as well as that, a reminder, um, I'll do the reminders before I do the uh, the full intro that subscribers that are in our discord if you link your discord and your twitch accounts you can enter the exclamation mark loot drop if anyone wants to type exclamation mark loot drop not loot droop which is what ads usually types <laughs> um loot drop uh, into the chat you will get the information that will give you the details on how you as a subscriber can win prizes and ice cream uploads the gist of it is if you're a sub we give you a chance to win something every month one person gets a free prize every month that's what it is nice uh, nice. Who else is here? Tito, good morning. 10 a.m. ish. You got them right. Uh, Lake, I'll read. Are you, are you on a break, Lake? Lake on a break. Um, Vern, Wagwan. Uh, Ad says L I ass. Yes, he was putting the ass in Elias. He was he was frustrating. Baby dropped the C4 in one mission. Um, what, as in so, that you had to use or, or what? Yeah. So one of the missions was you had to blow up the boat and I ended up getting downed. As I was going to take the, I had the C4. I was, I got downed, and I think it automatically drops it when you get downed. But then I didn't realize that that was the case. So when someone resed me and I went back down to plant the C4, I didn't have it. <laughs> so I had to run right, right the way back up to the top again. God damn <laughs> it! it <laughs> Human. Just, just dragging out the content. I like, I like the long play there. See what you're doing, big nice. <laughs> Professional. Uh, Tito says, according to my contractual obligations, I should mention that Back for Blood is available on Game Pass Day 1 on both PC and Xbox. Nice. Uh, Ad says, PES fans want to watch Gamescom. Uh, as I predicted, it's being shown there. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Like I was saying last week, there was no news. It usually gets shown, but this is a completely different year, so it might have been shown. It might not be shown, but uh, we got confirmation. It will be being shown at Gamescom, so we will get some PES news Uh later this month nice 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 but anyway if anyone doesn't know what this show is uh, or who we are my name is graham i'm joined by babe we are ice cream uploads and in true ice creamy fashion this is the scoop the uk's number one video game podcast even if we do say so ourselves we will give you our thoughts and our impressions on the biggest the best and breaking stories from the world of video games over the next hour or so as well as our thoughts and impressions we want your thoughts and impressions then we want your thoughts and impressions on our thoughts and impressions please do feel free to get involved in the chat we go live on twitch four five i'm going to say there's four shows this week but we go live on twitch five times every week monday to friday with the scoop live at 10 a.m ish ish Ish, 10 a.m. ish. It's now 11.32, so earlier than it has been. We went live at around 20 past, which is pretty good. I'll take it. So uh, we go live at 10 a.m. ish uh, each and every single week there on twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uploads. If you're in the chat, please do give us said thoughts and impressions because we turn the live stream into a podcast, a video that goes on YouTube and an audio podcast that goes on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, and Google Play. So there's lots of places where people can watch and listen on demand, but they don't get to get involved right here, right now, live in the chat like you guys do. But if you are on YouTube, you can you can just hit the like button and drop a comment down below because we want to see that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, before we jump into the show, I will mention the loot drop again. Exclamation mark loot drop if you haven't uh, checked it out already. If you want the details, you can find out how subscribers win prizes by doing that. But as well as that, exclamation mark muscle moose. I'm saying that because it's bloody warm in here today. If you yes. want yourself some nice, cool snacks. Oh, and there we go. Just as I said, it was on screen where the Corsair logo is now. It was just there a second ago. If you want some cool snacks or some moose juice, then feel free to type exclamation mark muscle moose. Uh, you will get a 25% one whole quarter uh, discount code. We don't earn on that, so it's not a hashtag ad. It's just a shout out to some people that do send us some hashtag gifted uh, prizes to the channel. Muscle Moose, it's good shit. It genuinely is, genuinely is. Uh, but yes, let's jump into the split screen. So we spoke about Back for Blood just a few seconds ago, um, and we're going to kick things off today. Back for Blood beta reached nearly 100,000 concurrent players on Steam this weekend, and the beta yeah. series from Back for Blood is not over. That will be our lead story of the day. We will then follow that up with a couple of Xbox-focused articles. Xbox has announced their Gamescom event. We talk, uh, we mentioned PES just a few minutes ago, but Xbox have confirmed they will have an event Tuesday, August 24th, 7 p.m. CEST. That's 6 p.m. for us in the UK. Um, and they will give a look at their upcoming games. As well as that, Xbox Cloud Gaming now has an app for PC. That is only open to the Xbox insiders at the moment, but will be coming to everyone. We'll go through that news. And then finally, Twitch has decided that when it bans someone and suspends someone, it will actually start to tell them why, which is amazing. I mean, it genuinely should have been there all along, but we'll go through all of those details first. But Bib, back for blood. Yes. You played through it yes. yesterday, start to yeah. finish, dropped C4s like an absolute boss. Uh, would you like to go through it again? Absolutely, Graham. 
Nice. Well, that's pretty good because uh, it's almost like you filled a gap just big enough for me to do this. There we go. Uh, <laughs> Don Pep- uh, Pepe at VG247 has this article. It says, Back from Blood Beta reached nearly 100,000 concurrent players on Steam this weekend. So Back for Blood, which has only launched this beta ahead of a full release in October, managed to attract almost 100,000 players this weekend. Uh, Back for Blood, a hotly anticipated co-op zombie shooter in the classic style from Turtle Rock Studios, is off to a pretty thunderous start. The game managed to attract a whopping peak of 98,024 players over this weekend, and that's just on Steam. Uh, The game, currently available as an early access beta test, became incredibly uh, incredibly popular very quickly when it launched its early access, became one of Steam's most actively played games in a few hours, in just a few hours, and its popularity continued throughout the weekend per SteamDB. That means this weekend, more people played Back 4 Blood on Steam than Destiny 2 or Final Fantasy XIV on Online. It's likely a similar situation on consoles too. Do you know? I, I most of the people I know that have been playing it, apart from content creators, have been playing it on consoles. So I think it could even be more more severe in that sort of sense. More players on consoles. Um, this beta will be available on Monday, August the 9th, and another is scheduled to take place later in the week, commencing on August the 12th and running through until August the 16th. So obviously it's the August August the 10th today, so this beta has closed, but another is scheduled to take place commencing, uh, commencing August 12th and running through to August 16th, basically this First weekend. Monday. Yeah, exactly. Uh, expect bigger numbers here. This time the game will be completely open, not, uh, not limited to pre-order promotions, Twitch drops, or giveaways. If you didn't get a chance to play this weekend, don't worry. Content is the same across both beta sessions and includes two full PvE missions, five of the eight survivors, all weapons, as well as PvP open for players. Uh, Sherry, uh, 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 Sharif, I should have said, this is, I was going to say Sharif, but Sharif, as in Sharif Saeed from VG247. Uh, Sharif has investigated uh, Back for Blood's deck building system and found it to be one of the game's greatest qualities. The article is worth a read for any, anyone wondering what sets the game apart from its co op shoot appears. The game is out October 12th, multi platforms. Bib, Back yes. for Blood, absolutely yes. nailing it in terms of concurrent players and number of players involved this weekend. Is that mm. because the game is that good? Is that because the game came at just the right time? Uh, there's not too many things hitting major notes right now, or is it a bit of both? What are your thoughts? I think it's I think it's number three as well, though, Graham. Like, I, if you didn't know how big Left 4 Dead was, this would have just passed you by. But Left 4 Dead has been one of the biggest games, and it still is one of the biggest games in terms of a co-op shooter there has ever, and still is one of the biggest games ever like you just you can, if there's a way of finding out how many people are playing those games have a look because the, the numbers will still be massive and when was the last left for dead it's got to be like 2019 or something left for dead 2 let's find out when this came out uh, uh come on why is it i don't know why my search engine has gone to bing for fuck's sake who's going to <laughs> bing to find, like it, Google it because comes up on the right hand side. Left 4 Dead is a two Left 4 Dead Two is a two thousand and nine multiplayer survival horror first person shooter. Like this game is still going strong. There's a reason why because it's so freaking good. And if people can try to emulate it, but they never seem to come close. The people who made Left 4 Dead have now made Black for Blood. So there's a reason why people want to be able to play it because there it doesn't there doesn't ever seem to be a Left 4 Dead Three which has been mentioned and rumored for. 12 years now and it's just not come to fruition but here we are this is technically left for dead to uh, left for dead 3 and it's fucking glorious if you've ever played any of those games you'll see that this is everything that that gate those games had but just a million times better like the card system that sharif mess uh, me- uh, mentioned in uh, well, w- that was mentioned at the bottom of this article. It definitely makes it stand out. So each time that you boot into a new act, you'll get uh, a, a five cards that come up and you get to choose like if you want extra reloading speed if you want extra stamina if you want a little bit more health and those cards will start to stack so if you've got um if you choose health five times you'll get 25 percent more health when you go into your next stat like it it just makes it stand out a little bit more it just adds a new flavor to it so you can get like increased i don't know if anyone was i know ads was watching it till the very end but how fast my gun started to reload because that's what i chose a number of times because the guns that i was using no wonder you had no ammo (laughs) (laughs) yeah that's it like the guns i was choosing only had like between 14 and 20 bullets which isn't a lot when you've got hordes of zombies so you need that fast reload and that's what i got like it was just 
it was incredible. But yeah, this the, there's a massive reason as to as to why uh, there's several reasons. Shall, sorry, shall I say why this game is a huge success? And this is just the beginning. This is going to into open beta this week again starts on Thursday and ends on Monday and the numbers will be probably double what we've experienced this weekend it's just such a good game but like you said before we went live I hope to god that this progression carries over because there's a lot of people that are going to spend a lot of time and they're going to have to do it again but it doesn't really feel that much of a grind so I think probably people will probably be happy to do it I think it'd be nice if it does if it does move into the main um, main one main one sorry yeah, so I mean, the bit we were talking about before we went live was um, I only got to play a little bit of it with Bibi yesterday. So I had to jump off. I jumped in for about 30, 40 minutes and I jumped off, uh, then had to jump off. So Bibi continued to play through right to the end of it. And I said, I don't mind that that much because it's the same with anything. It's not necessarily back for blood or shooter specific. Uh, the other example I gave to Bibi is playing um, the back in the Pez fan days. So when I was uh, a news writer for Pez fan, I would get access to the preview build of an early Pez um, uh, that would probably have an early Master League in it. I'd then start a Master League, play that for a few hours or a few days mm-hmm. if I had access to take it home. Um, then we'd get the review build, which would be a brand new, completely separate build. So I'd start a Master League and then I'd start running through that. And then we'd get either um, the, the the press copy or the, or, the, or the launch copy, whichever one it was, um, which was the final build, which meant I'd start a new Master League and then run through it. So there's a little bit of doing the same thing over and over and over again, uh, which I don't mind the fact that if I had to do the same, um, if I had to do the missions over and over again, do it now, do it in the in the closed beta, do it in the open beta, do it in the full full game. Like, Ugh. That said, mm. um, playing it yesterday, there was so much going on. Plus we had that Elias dude that I was talking about earlier that was just getting in the way, um, that there was a lot that I didn't really take in, a lot that I missed. So I wouldn't be against playing through this again because I felt it was just like almost an attack on the senses. So I didn't really anticipate what was going on around me. I didn't really take in uh, the mm-hmm. missions. It was just run, shoot, and press stuff, open things, try grab stuff. I was trying to just fat finger looting because there was something on the floor. If I didn't pick it up, even though I was looking at it, that Elias yeah. twat would just come run over and go, yoink, <laughs> and just run off again. It's like, well, you fucking selfish prick. For all you know, I've got six bullets left, you twonk. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, um, I wouldn't be averse playing it again. I do like the fact that it's coming, and I think... If it nearly hit one hundred thousand players on a closed beta, yes, it it was it was kind of a a closed beta, but the door was kind of half open um, yeah. because of the uh, the way that you could watch cream. on Twitch. Madge, thank you very much for the host, dude, and Vern as well. Uh, thank you for the early host. I love you. Um, but it was kind of Legend. like a, a wedged open door because if you watch for long enough, you got access to the beta code. Is that what it was? You watch for an hour and then you get the beta yeah, code. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they went down the Valorant sort of route, which which is nice. That also kind of artificially inflates viewer numbers, and then also kind of artificially inflates Steam numbers. I mean, the Steam numbers are less artificial because that people have to actually be playing when that is happening um that said that is still closed so even though the door was kind of wedged open it was still closed a lot of people will be like you know i'm not i'm not bothered i'll wait until uh i can get the code guaranteed or i can just download it for free uh easy peasy from whatever platform uh next week you're all hosted by me appreciate the auto hosters by the way i do like i do dislike the fact that there's no way like when a stream starts it should kind of go like there should be a bling 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 like have almost like a credits or a quick roll of people that are auto hosting the stream just so that because that's that is a massive thing for a channel to be auto hosted by other channels that's someone that says i trust you and your content and your community enough to automatically show you to my community when i'm not there yeah it's a massive thing but it just goes silently so shout out to the auto hosters cheers ads uh, and everyone else so there's there's quite there's quite, there's quite a few sense. channels that actually auto host us so uh, let me quick quick run through dz games john hookway smurf jeroon kangorilla Dog next gen base, Sonicon, Badinsky, Sep, uh, ACM, Tix, Enix, Madge, Jen Barton, S Venom, Dad and Lad Gaming, uh, Owner Human Jelly, Sweaty Cobra, Let's Play Nico, Spike, uh, Where's My Six, <laughs> Chucky, Entail, Raiden, Ads, Ultrafires, Bibby, Kulan, and the Vern. Uh, appreciate you all. Thank you very much for the host slash auto hosts. See, there's a lot of people there that don't get the love every day, but we genuinely do appreciate it. So it's nice to do it every, mm-hmm. every now and then. But yes, back for Blood Players uh, needs, uh, reached nearly 100,000. I mean, it could be five times that this weekend. It, uh, maybe mm-hmm. not, maybe not, maybe not. But, but it could be overall. I mean, that's just off of Steam player base. Like I said, most people I know that played the game 
content creators had PC keys. Everyone else that wasn't a content creator had uh, a console key for this game. So if there's 100,000 on Steam, just from my own echo chamber, which could be very skewed towards console, yeah. um, I would have said it could have been, there could have been 300,000 more on console playing this. But, but yeah, that, that's just my look so yeah big numbers big numbers hopefully it continues hopefully the numbers are massive this weekend and there was a comment from ads a little bit earlier on that says uh where was it there was a, a gg ggwp b4 uh, b makers um so yeah i mean that's it shout out to uh, turtle rock they've done a really good job with this hopefully um they can work there we go that, that, like as i said that's the bit uh look, looking forward to it hope they take players feedback and i hope they do i genuinely reckon they will do though this is a this game exists and has been successful because of what came before it bibi mentioned left yeah. for dead because of those games so i fully expect turtle rock studios to be aware that they can do what they do because of what they've done and they can only do what they do because of who they do it for so i fully expect tweaks uh improvements based on player feedback I'd be massively shocked if we don't get that. Um, uh, I want you back. I want you <laughs> back. I want you back for blood. Have you, you check out my Instagram story. That's exactly the uh, the uh, bit of music that I put on alongside it. Uh, so there you go. Uh, it was fun to watch. I cannot wait for speed runs and challenge runs. Uh, Mr. G thought he was playing PUBG with a zombie mod. Yes, yeah, still still nailed it though, didn't I, mate? Still nailed it, mate. Um, uh, I think playing Back for Blood again and again and up in the difficulty when you're comfortable is part of the appeal. It's never going to uh, it's it's never going to have completely different twenty five acts. I mean, I think that's kind of the thing, um, which is which is why it's kind of not not my sort of thing. I'm not a repetitive sort of player in that sort of sense. And that's kind of where me and Bibi differ the most. Bibi will play through games that he loves over and over and over again. And I will do it with chunks of time in between them. Mm -hmm. I don't tend to like to go over the, the ground that I've been over, which is exactly why I'm not a, a trophy hunter. So other than these, it's a PlayStation Platinum trophy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sh shout out exclamation mark 3d if anyone wants to buy any of these by the way and these xbox achievements steve brusty uh shout mm -hmm. out to ben and next gen base for providing us with those lovely um other than those i don't really have many trophies i don't i don't go trophy hunting because quite a lot of trophy hunting uh, you have to either retrace old steps go over ground that you've already covered and that's not something i tend to do uh as someone that consumes content which is yeah. which is probably why left for dead I've played a bit of, but didn't massively resonate with me, whereas Bibi absolutely adores uh, Left 4 Dead. So, so yeah. But then again, I enjoyed what I was in yesterday uh, when I was shooting at Elias. It was wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> but like Luke, Luke said there, so play a bit, uh, back, for, uh, back for Blood again and again and up in the difficulty when you're comfortable is part of the appeal. I absolutely agree with that because we was just playing it on standard, but there was, I think there was three more difficulties afterwards. Then you get the uh, supplies at the end of each level for you then to be able to go and buy different packs for your cards to be able to have a different uh, set to go into each battle like that's just for the pve stuff you've obviously got the pvp stuff that we didn't even touch so providing i am not going to be busy which i don't think i am obviously i will i do want to stream this again at some point this week i want to be able to go in and see what the pvp is going to be looking at i don't know how it's going to work but i'm excited to see what that's got got to offer so i do think there's more than just what meets the eye in terms of you've got a couple of acts to go through try and get try and get through them there will be tons of dlc i reckon that'll offer new maps uh, new campaigns and stuff so hopefully this game well if a game from 2009 is still being played to this day and people have either modded it to add new levels or just added new shit to it in general then i i can see this surviving for 10 years as well easily the only downside to something like that sort of situation is people like the game from 2009 and they've played that for 12 years and their mods and stuff and then the new game comes along and naturally pushes the envelope, has to take it to the next level. The only downside is whether people go, I like what I like and this is not what yeah. I like, this is different. So hopefully it can move forward and bring the past with it rather than just alienating those, those stalwarts. Um just if I can ask everyone, well, whilst we're at this point, just before we jump into the next bit of news, that last tweet, so obviously there was the uh, 3D uh, printed gaming goodies, courtesy of Winstano at Next Gen Based, so the 3D impressions link there. But the one below that, if you can hit a retweet on that one, uh, we'd appreciate that one. That's the live now tweet, just to let everyone know that we're live so we can invite more people into the conversations. Uh, in this modern world, plenty of opportunity for crossover content, movies, etc., given it's Warner Brothers published. And Warner Brothers are, are exceptional at that, almost to a fault. One thing that Warner Brothers is really good at is 
activating existing licenses and you see that more and more and more you will get other films featured in other films other films featured in games um and yeah i i, I wouldn't be surprised this is the perfect sort of attack on the sensors in the best way possible uh that yeah. that that the repetitive nature the the fact that it's it's almost the story is almost secondary uh, within it, which gives you a bit of flexibility. And, and that's not a negative. So Fortnite's story is is secondary to the actual Battle Royale. The fact that there's, there's obviously the seasons are completely different, that happens because the, fort, uh, the story is secondary. There's no key law right at the beginning that you have to hold... Uh, true to your heart you can do whatever the feck you want um yeah. which which makes fortnite able to go wherever loop in deadpool have uh, uh chun li ryu uh guile and cami and whatever dropping into the game um because they can do what they want because the story isn't too precious um and left for dead story is a bit more precious but it's also not just about Stay in. If you want a zombie shooter game with story, then play The Last of Us. If you want a zombie shooter game that's about the action and the gunplay and, and the team play and the camaraderie and just just surviving together, then play Left 4 Dead or Back for Blood. Mm -hmm. And the reason uh, and the benefit of that <clears throat> means that Warner Brothers can go, okay, well we'll have a um, I can't even someone, someone throw out a random Warner Brothers property. We'll take that. We'll, we'll fucking uh, uh, not. I'm not going to mention that. like crossover with like Batman or something like that, couldn't you? Yeah, exactly. Um, or other other Warner Brothers movies like non superhero is sort Max. of yeah, exactly that sort of stuff. Army of the Dead, perfect that sort of stuff. Uh, easy crossovers there. Wouldn't be surprised if you start to see that sort of stuff. If this game has a, a, a long tail ish shelf life say six months down the line after launch obviously um then i wouldn't be surprised if they freshen up that game by putting if army of the dead uh, had a sequel coming out in six months time obviously it won't be but if it did um whatever film comes out that that point in time you freshen up back for blood whilst also um sharing your new film release with an engaged audience it win-win yeah. we've, we've seen resident evil doing a lot of cro crossover content in multiple different platforms uh pubg's had godzilla uh and stuff within it as and, and yeah ex i'd expect a lot of that definitely imagine if imagine if they did do one with like batman and you're in like uh gotham city and the joker has released his poisonous gas and then everyone turns into the joker and you just got waves and waves of like Gotham City civilians all dressed or have all the faces white with the uh with like green hair, red makeup and stuff like that. That'll be sick. Yeah, there that... you go. They can have that idea for free. Uh, yeah, they, I mean, it's PUBG have already done it. Yeah, but whatever, 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 it's fine. <laughs> PUBG's already got uh, Joker and Harley, Harley Quinn, and it's, it's fine, whatever. Just let me copy PUBG's ideas. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> See that I'm a joke. Well, what, what basically what I'm saying is, Bibby is massive fan of PUBG and he just doesn't want to admit it. That's what it is. Well, uh, I'm not going to say no. You got them right. Tell you what else you're not going to say no to. An Go Xbox on. Game Scom conference. I can't say it. Xbox Games Com conference. Uh, don't know it's what it is about the words Xbox. I just they just mess up <laughs> my verbal platform. Xbox Games Com. Uh, so yeah, Xbox confirms that Gamescom's uh, event will be looking at new upcoming games. This is our next news article, and it's written by Andy Robinson at VGC. The live stream will focus on previously announced Xbox Game Studio titles. Xbox has confirmed its plans for the all-digital Gamescom event later this month, including a live-streamed event on August the 24th. The official Gamescom 2021 Xbox stream will start at 6 p.m., British summertime and offer in-depth updates from some of our previously announced uh, Xbox Game Studios titles alongside some of our third-party partners as well as new uh, news on titles coming to Xbox Game Pass. Xbox Game Studios will likely use the event to provide updates on upcoming 2021 games such as Forza Horizon 5 and Halo Infinite. Um, users can watch the show on YouTube, Twitch, hey, Facebook, uh, gaming, Twitter, and select regional sites like VK.com in Russia and Bibi in China. Billy, yeah. Billy, Billy in China. Uh, in addition, uh, Xbox also points to the August 25th Gamescom opening night live in its show plans brief, which could suggest, excuse me, that the platform holder will also feature some of its games during the Ke Jeff Keighley hosted show. 
In addition to the Xbox event, Bethesda Germany will have its own live stream program over several days starting August the 26th. You can tune into Bethesda's mainstream on Twitch. Finally, Xbox will run a, a digital Gamescom sale for fans uh, for our fans in Europe, it said. The sale will include savings of up to 75% on a range of games for Xbox consoles or Windows 10 PCs. Details will be made available closer to the show. Gamescom's 2021 main event days will take place from August the 26th to the 27th, following the opening night live showcase. Um, major game publishers recently confirmed their partic uh, participation in this month's event, including Xbox, EA, Sega, and Activision. Also, uh, not within this article, because I think this article was probably written uh yep yeah, a little bit beforehand but konami announced that they will be there with Yu-Gi-Oh and eFootball 2022 as well okay gamescom 2021 will be an all digital event for the second year running after its organizers abandoned plans to do yeah we get the idea gamescom is digital so xbox has confirmed that they will have uh, a gamescom xbox stream which will feature a look at upcoming games there will also be some bethesda content and they will be in fe uh, featured in the get the uh, opening night live jeff Keighley showcase lots of xbox content what are your thoughts babe do you know what, what i love about this graham is that it's localized time for the mandem do you know what i mean yeah. 6 p.m motherfucker that is what I'm most looking forward to. That we don't have to stay up until eleven o'clock to go live and then sit there and watch Koch for two hours. Like this, my friends, six o'clock, perfect. And it's Xbox absolutely had for me the best conference at E3. Are we going to see more of that? Are they going to continue to show us some fantastic shit? I hope to God. Uh, this is going to be great. Uh, just want to shout out. Um to a, a Danny Day 83 the name seems familiar thank you very much for 21 months Prime beautiful beautiful thank you very much babe cheers thank uh, um, yeah I, Bibi mentioned I like the uh, localised time uh, so if I bring the asset back up you can see it here Tuesday 24th of August 10am PT 1pm so 6pm for us I like the fact that it says 6pm BST on there so this is a direct message to Jeff Keighley and the Game Awards you guys do not put BST on any of your <laughs> assets at all we have to look at Ever. European times and take off an hour put BST on it <sighs> Um, actually, do you know, I'm going to go on a little bit of a tangent here. I can't remember. I was trying to remember. Actually, I have remembered. I have remembered who it was. Um, so if anyone doesn't know who Frankie Ward is, she is an esports host. She does a lot of major um, events uh, like the Valorants and the CSGO. She, she did some of the PUBG stuff in the past. And she hosts she's on the pc so she was on the pc game uh, oh, is it, is it, oh, i can't remember is it the pc gamer show uh it is yeah yeah uh, so we watched pc gamer live for e3 and that's the one that's kind of like over the top they were on like a spaceship and stuff like that anyway frankie is one of the hosts of that and she said something that absolutely resonated with me last week um when jeff keely announced that gamescom opening night live will be happening and it will be happening uh before the show one of the comments that came out of that is I'm, I'm good to see more content being made i'm happy to see more content being made around gamescom but do we really need to see more jeff Keighley fronted content on that is it not better to have another voice in the industry which i absolutely 100 agree with because we get the big games award show is hosted by Jeff Keighley. The big E3 show is hosted by Jeff Keighley. The big games got... Yeah, can you get where we're going? It's Jeff Keighley all the time. I feel like, give us more. Give us someone else. Uh, the fact that all of the big shows are written by one voice is not necessarily... It's, it's, we, we always talk about one voice controlling... Uh, external media, the, the likes of the Rupert Murdochs of the world. <clears throat> Not that Jeff Keighley is Rupert Murdoch, but Rupert yeah. Murdoch wasn't Rupert Murdoch at one point in time. So yeah. I, I kind of feel like I see if I see if I can I, I'll see if I can find her actual uh, comment when I saw it because I liked it at that point in time. Thinking, do you know what? I fully agree with it. Uh, isn't it? He's not going to turn down the work, is it? Like, do you know what I mean? Like people have come come to expect him being the face. It's like. Uh, <laughs> It's like this is going to be a ridiculous analogy, but it's like not having Ant and Deck on 14 times a year. Do you know what I mean? You know there's going to be a Saturday night takeaway. You know there's going to be a Hammer Celebrity. Get me out of here. Like the, you kind of know what to expect when these shows are coming on. There's a reason why they've won it like 15 years in a row. It's just 
when you hear video game conferences, you know who's going to be hosting them. But I agree. If I can get more Austin Creed out there, then I'm fucking buzzing with that. If I can get Austin Creed and Greg Miller, that'd be the absolute dream. <laughs> yes, <lineup>. please. Get, <laughs> get Greg James on there with Austin Creed. <laughs> That would be the absolute dream. I mean, Frank is absolutely insane at hosting as well. Get her on there doing it. But yeah, I do agree with you. Like it, it's Jeff Keighley and these conferences are just synonymous with each other. Like you, they just go hand in hand. You absolutely know there's going to be a day where he's not going to do it, whether or not someone just fucks him off and go, I can't be asked looking at you anymore. We'll get somebody else in. That just let's just hope that the person comes in and does a fantastic job and then the work can be shared between everyone because like you say sometimes it can be a little bit dull seeing the same person over and over again because you feel like you're just watching all of the games comes put together well i've got the i've got the tweet i've put the link in the chat for those that might want to see it but this is at frankie ward on twitter i think onl opening that live is cool for gamescom but having one so soon after the e3 show keely did feels like potentially more of the same and maybe it might be nice to have some other voices too she then says in response keely is clearly an excellent yeah, it's still on the screen, making sure. Keely is clearly an excellent, experienced producer, but the E3 show positioned before all other press, uh, press conferences potentially takes surprises away from the publisher showcases as publishers try and get in on the first broadcast. So I'd rather see Open Night Live than have both. Um, so, uh, yeah, no, I, I agree. I agree. And the, f the reason I mention this is because um, Opening Night Live, I believe, is the day after. Is that the 25th of August? I'm pretty sure that's the 25th because that's when I'm off. And I was saying, depending on what, what our plans are for the day, um, I may be around for opening night live. I may not be. But the Xbox conference is on the 24th. And I wonder if that is because Xbox want to get out in front. It's nice having your Xbox conference at E3, but then when opening night live or the E3 conference comes along and has that, I mean, what do they call it? Summer Games Fest or something like that. It was it was a generic yeah. name that I didn't really like. But, but that coming before it is... Um, it's, there's a definite, there's a definite, Jeff Keighley is a journalist and a producer and a content creator, and he knows that getting there first is a big win. If you're not there first, you're last, is, is the news um, uh, adage of old. And Jeff Keighley knows that. Getting there first gets you the headlines, even if it's not the biggest. As long as you're there first, it will make more of a splash. Um, and I like the fact that Xbox, maybe they've seen it and gone, okay, we'll go the day before. Yep, yep, yeah. we'll, we'll take the take the uh, the 24th. It's not really the date that we wanted, but it gets us out in front and it allows us to get our content and we can talk about our content. Tuesday, not famously the biggest night for video games marketing, but we'll go with Tuesday, 6 p.m. Tuesday evening because that gets us ahead of 6 p.m. Wednesday evening, which Wednesday evening is ahead of Thursday when the show opens. So I like the fact that Xbox is going first because it, it puts the the games first, Xbox mm -hmm. first. I want Xbox and the games to be first. Gamescom is wonderful, but Gamescom is there for the games. Opening Night Live is wonderful, but it's there for the games. And every other yeah. show, the Game Awards are there for the games. But the fact that they're always there front and center and first is not an accident. And that's not necessarily being there for the games. That's fulfilling its own prophecies. So... Yes, massively excited for an Xbox Gamescom event. The Xbox E3 event was wonderful, and the fact it's first is is nice because yeah. they, they get out in front. That's what you want to see. Oh. Either way, they, uh, if if obviously I'm hosting this and you're away, that's uh, whatever happens. We will be hosting the Xbox One. That's an absolute given because if there's one conference out of them all that I want to see, it's absolutely this one. So we'll be hosting it. We'll be doing a watch along. We need to speak to the man. Then I may have just heard Pod my uh, drink all down myself it's fine nobody saw it it's, it's not like we're live on the internet <laughs> or any time <laughs> usually when we go live it's like, oh. well i will be around for this one on the 24th um i'll definitely be around for the xbox one i might not be around for opening night live but yes we'll, we'll definitely have an xbox i mean the xbox one they smashed it at e3 one of the best conferences it de definitely within the last 24 months although that's kind of a given because of the last 24 <laughs> months but even <laughs> Even then, without that, still one of the best conferences, uh, hands down. Uh, Bacon Chin says, Bibby, I'll join you in the hosting. Oh, so you're not going to join there me? Is, is that how it is? <laughs> All right, fine. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see. That's how it is, mate. But yeah, that'd be wonderful. That'd be wonderful. If you're, if you're interested in hosting Bacon Chin, we can, we can loop you in. Yeah. I'm the better G. Uh, okay, we, sorry, actually, I've just accidentally pre pressed the ban forever button. Where is that? The <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, absolutely, we can get you in. Um, 
where do we get to? Indeed, it's, it's in danger of being the Jeff Keighley show featuring game trailers. And that's, I don't think that's what he wants it to be. I genuinely think Jeff Keighley is, is, a, is a for the games minded person, but naturally you want to succeed in your own content. And I don't know if he's aware of it, but but I, I mean, clearly I'm not the only person that thinks it because Frankie Ward has posted my exact sentiments on Twitter. <laughs> Okay, it's cool and it's good and it's and it's nice that we we're promoting the games and stuff and you've done a great job at at, at seeding the games awards out in all these different countries which we will calling it now calling it now we're going to have a post in December that says the game awards broadcast live in 215 countries around the world which which is which is huge for games maybe it'll be 216 whatever the number is it's got to be bigger than the year before because that's what we always do um but then we'll have similar things and I just, and Jeff Keighley I just feel like okay you do one you don't have to present and host them all you're you you've got the plaudits and praise let's let's see someone else go first let's yeah. maybe not it's just we'll try so in it yeah, like if you're a producer and you're looking at trying to uh, and you're trying to build a show, is a very very comfortable choice. But I mean, he'll be a very though, like, expensive one. He's the producer though. He, that's that's the thing. It's he's producing it and putting himself in that position, which is natural. It's like it's like that the old Dennis Waterman. Like I write the theme tune, I sing the theme tune, I star in the show. It's like it's like um, it's it. And that's what I'm saying, that it becomes the Jeff Keighley show, as as uh, Mad just said. It's in danger of becoming the Jeff Keighley show. And I, and I don't want it to be that because he's got he's got a really good input into the games industry. I just feel like there's a lot of people that have a lot of input. It doesn't always have to be the same one. Like Bibby says, we don't want Ant and Deck Saturday Night Takeaway and Ant and Deck on Britain's Got Talent and Ant and Deck on X Factor. And, and uh, Yeah. Um, uh, we'll see Fable uh, for a... Oh, Forza. Okay, there we go. Uh, we'll see Fable. <laughs> I was like, for uh, what? <laughs> for a for little a bit? Uh, we'll see Fable, Forza, a bit more Halo. I think Bethesda will obviously feature heavily. heavily. I think it'll be big for Microsoft. It needs to be, to be honest. Um, I kind of don't feel like it needs to be, and I also feel like it does need to be, because Microsoft, I don't feel like they need to do anything right now because they've been doing so well, and they've got no real competition from PlayStation in terms of outward marketing and content. That said, I also do feel like they need it to just keep on hitting home. PlayStation had had such a long-term period of community messaging, good games, good content, outward um, outward broadcasts for a long period of time at the start of the PS4 generation. And if Xbox just keeps hammering home, hey, yeah, we're still here. Yeah, we're still wonderful. Yeah, we're still beautiful. Yeah, this is great. Yeah, you've got free stuff. Nice, 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 nice. And, and then PlayStation, meanwhile, is still quiet. I don't feel like they need to, but I feel like if they want to just keep breaking through, uh, breaking down walls and barriers, I think doing that will be massively helpful them, uh, for them. So, And I think they will be probably in the same mind frame as well. They haven't slowed down with any of their marketing. Um, and as we'll see with our next bit of content, they're, they're not slowing down in terms of, their content output or their their community and um, software and hardware output either. So yeah, I, I, I fully expect them to go decent with it. Um, get Enix in. Think he's moderately interested in Xbox and Halo. You think? Maybe. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Um, mm. um, I think it can be his show, but I have not just just him in front of camera. Get a diverse bunch of creators involved. Yeah, exactly. Or even just have him doing the. Um, hi guys, it's Jeff Keighley. We're here again uh, as a VT sort of thing. Welcome to the Gamescom opening night live showcase. Hopefully you have a wonderful show now. Let's get into things. Let's pass you over to Austin Creed, who is live on the Gamescom showcase. And then the show gets amazing. Because, not, yeah. I mean, Jeff Keighley's an exceptional host as well. I'm not saying that he's a shit host and he's, he's got no personality. He's really good. It's just, mm -hmm. it's it's him again. <laughs> it's just, he's writing, he's producing it. So it's his thoughts and his editing. I mean, even last year, the um the Gamescom op opening like opening night live trailer was posted on um maybe the the Game Awards social media and then Jeff Keighley shared it saying I fully edited this trailer myself and it was like great <laughs> but there was yeah. lots of lots of input from everyone around opening night live it's not just you there is many voices give us all of the voices yeah. um. Xbox has done well, but the big differential is exclusive. Sony has battered them on that front, and that's to change. That well, that will be changing. That 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 is yeah, something that Sony can't sit on. Give them time. 
Yeah, exactly. I mean, something Sony would like to sit on that, absolutely, um, but they're not going to be able to. It's absolutely going to be taken away from them. Xbox are going to have so many different uh, exclusives with all of the studios that they have. They're looking at, like, it was either once a month or once a quarter. I can't remember it, um, but they will have shitloads. I'm very interested if it was once a month. Jesus Christ, that's a lot of games. <laughs> yeah, imagine, yeah, I think you're right. I think it is once a quarter. Which is which is incredible just to keep churning out and if they keep doing variety and big games then then that takes away the the one ace in the hole that playstation has which is wonderful because that means that playstation then now start need uh, they need to be competitive because the best things happen when someone needs to overtake xbox had a monopoly after xbox 360 um and got greedy playstation had a, a monopoly after uh ps4 i wouldn't say they got greedy but i would say they got lazy in comparison to xbox so xbox is it's, it's the, the whole two cars overtaking each other zoom, zoom, zoom. Uh, okay xbox are pulling up alongside and have the opportunity to burst out in front that will then hopefully kick playstation into life and realize oh shit we've got another gear that we can jump into to, to, to catch up kind of thing <laughs> uh and then yeah nice we'll have that um eFootball will reveal modes, I reckon. They need to promote my club as that's the moneymaker as it's free to play also. Um, uh, other, uh, never go full Hideo Kojima, Jeff. Exactly, exactly. That, 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 that's it. Bacon Chin says, uh, Jeff, and here's my best friend forever, Hideo Kojima. <laughs> Good old BFFs. <laughs> I mean, that's that's going to happen. That's going to happen. Uh, here's a, here's a, a 12 minute look at Hideo Kojima's new products or just his face. Um, and the reason we're going to do this is because I'm the creator. This is my singular vision. I mean, I absolutely adore Hideo Kojima. Um, but last year, there was obviously uh, a little bit, I was earlier this year, there was a little bit of kickoff because Hideo Kojima looked like he was taking all of the praise and the plaudits because he did the producing, he did the directing, he did the tea runs, he went to Starbucks with the app in his hand and spent using his own points award balance to make sure that everyone gets the free extra shots in their coffees and stuff. And he did it all. Um, and that's not what he was trying to say. He wasn't trying to take the, the credit for everyone else, but by taking the credit, he was taking the credit. Uh, and it kind of looked like that, that way. And that's kind of, what I don't want to see from Jeff Keighley because I, I I respect and I have a lot of time for both names, Jeff Keighley and Hideo Kojima. I just, I don't believe that what either of them would want to see that they have a, a monopoly on thought in the games industry, but that is where it looks like it's going for me. Um, and if they if they if they let other people have a voice, if they let other people share their thoughts, if they let other people have directorial or producerial is that a word uh, d uh, direction content input, then that's wonderful for me because we get to see a wide of, array of creativity. Um, and yeah, Jeff Keighley is is for me is getting closer to that point where it's I directed I I, I edited this trailer myself. It's, okay, great, but all of those games were made by thousands of people in the games industry. The reason your trailer looks good is because the components that you had to put into your trailer were exceptional to begin with. How about high-fiving those guys? It's not about your editing, it's about the games. Uh, but yeah, anyway, we'll start. Um, it's annoying that Sony don't need to wow anyone at the moment. Uh, as a gamer, you want to see the future, and the future Sony are showing is what we've had for almost 24 months. Exactly. There's nothing bad with it, but there's nothing new with it, and that's that's the thing. Is like, we... we it, where's... Where, it, it feels like we're on a precipice, like the future is around the corner. But the, the thing is, when it's around the corner, you can't see it. You almost need someone going, hey, the future is around the corner. And that's what Xbox are doing. They're talking about the future. They're letting you know exactly where the corner is. PlayStation, just at the moment, feels like they let... If you, we, we all know there's a corner and the future is around it, but I'm not going to tell you where it is, when it is, or hint at what, what could be around there. We just, you just have yeah. to wait, which is, which is interesting. But also, is it the best plan? And and that's I'll put up in this this conversation a bit. But that is kind of echoed by um, one of the PlayStation execs. They basically said, "Judge us on our marketing campaign when it's done. Don't compare us to Xbox. Their campaign suits them. Our campaign suits us." Which is which is the perfect analogy. The only thing is, obviously, as a gamer living life. Um, I am probably in the same boat as a lot of other people that through this point of the marketing campaign, even though they are separate campaigns and should be judged separately, you, you naturally compare. Competitor analysis is is a is a human strategy for coping for just general life. 
Um, so looking at the way Xbox are doing something, it's not necessarily the right way, but it's it's giving me more hype moments right now and has consistently given me more hype moments than PlayStation has for the last last quarter of a year. So yeah, yeah they are separate things, but, but Xbox is speaking to me directly, whereas PlayStation kind of lets me think they're going to start speaking to me. And when they do, the conversation is going to be fucking badass. But 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 I don't know when. When are we going to have this conversation? When's it going to start? Um, uh, Hideo, uh, PlayStation, let's wait and see. Eyes. Ooh, is that... I don't know. What, what what's, what's the sentiment behind that, Mr. T? Is that a wait and see tease? Or is that a PlayStation's let's wait and see? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh, uh, Hideo, what have you been working on recently? Jeff, I've made a lasagna. <laughs> Jeff Keeley licking his own ass after announcing Elden Ring. His tongue is still in there, and I bet, I bet he will mention it during Gamescom. <laughs> uh, huge things are coming. You're goddamn right. The thing about marketing is that only the people who are proud, hot on it, who think it works, is the individual who is making it. Uh, I mean, that that is that is kind of it. I mean, it, it kind of obviously goes out beyond that, so obviously people can agree, but... Um, yeah, if if it if it stops at that point, then you've done marketing wrong. Your marketing f is exciting for you, but then if that's not reciprocated, then your marketing's not good. Um, so you need to find a way to share that creativity, and that's often a lot of the issues with marketing. Is is the idea is wonderful, but the execution and sharing the messaging behind the marketing is what get gets lost. It's the, it's the uh, the semantics. People don't read the semantics and don't get the significance of why you didn't mention something or why you did mention something, and that's when marketing is 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 like. If people don't pick up the subtext, then then you've lost it. Um, to be fair, that was a massive get. Elden Ring announcement, that is. Don't begrudge Jeff being proud of getting that on his show and picking it up. I think any one of us would have done the same. Um, on call, so sadly missing most of your discussion. It's not good enough. It's not yeah. good enough. Enjoy the calls. I, 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 it, it, work comes first. We appreciate you being here, though. Thank you very much, Madge. Um, oh, but no, I, yeah, don't, be, don't begrudge Jeff. I mean, my issue isn't the fact that Jeff is shouting about getting exclusives and being successful because that's that's exactly what what we all want to do. You get a new job, you're going to tweet about it. You get you move from one position to another, get a promotion, you're going to tweet about it. And that's the closest we get to securing a game announcement being on your show. It's that's that's fine. I've got no issue with that sort of stuff. It's I, I, I mean, I'm fine with memeing it because memes is memes, memes is dreams. Um, but beyond that sort of stuff, it, like I would love to see more big announcements in these shows because that means that there's a reason for Opening Night Live to exist. Opening Night Live last year was was it was pretty crap. If I'm going to be brutally honest, comparing that to it was, it's not Koch Media crap, but it wasn't Xbox good. It was a long way from Xbox good, um, and it's it was it it wasn't up even anywhere near the EA. Um, Greg James, aka Greg Miller, um, hosted uh, conferences that we saw last year. Those were so much better than the opening night, like, opening night live content last year. So hopefully it gets better this year. I think that was partially due to, to a lack of content. But if there's not enough content, why do we need the show? Hopefully it's it could be chicken and egg. Now we've got the show, we might get the content. People might start building the content for that content beat. Um, and then maybe we might start to get other people competing with that content. And just like the ESA, they had a lockdown on E3, and now they don't because of someone like Jeff Keighley, which is wonderful. We have someone challenging the ESA's voice, but now are we in danger of Jeff Keighley replacing the ESA being the only voice? I don't know. I don't know. That's. I don't think we are there yet, but I think we do get closer to that, and I hope that changes. Uh, anyway, not going too far from Xbox, they do confirm that they have, uh, they have confirmed that, that they have a, a Gamescom event coming up Tuesday the 24th, was it? 6pm uh, mm -hmm. British summertime, we will be live with that content, potentially with Bacon Chin, you never know, and also potentially with Enix, or or Mr. T, or Winston, or whoever, we'll, 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 we'll let you know, we'll let you know, we'll lock all of that stuff in, we haven't done that just yet, but one thing we can do for certain right now is tell you about Xbox's cloud gaming, uh, it's now available on PC via the Xbox app, uh, this is written by Tom Ivan at VGC, and the tagline says, The service is initially open to Xbox insiders ahead of its wider rollout. Microsoft has launched Xbox Cloud Gaming on Windows PCs through the Xbox app. The service is initially available to Xbox Game Pass Ultimate subscribers who are signed up to the Xbox Insider program. Microsoft said the Xbox Insider launch is designed, quote, to gather additional feedback from the Xbox community to help us refine the experience ahead of a broader rollout. To access the service, PC owners need to connect a compatible controller via Bluetooth or USB. Excuse me. Uh, once the Xbox app is launched, users 
should select the Cloud Games button and choose a title to start playing. Microsoft also said it has added some new features to Xbox Cloud Gaming, including information on controller and network status, social features, and the ability to invite other players to games. Xbox Cloud Gaming was made, uh, was made available to all Xbox Game Pass Ultimate subscribers on PC and at iOS via web, uh, web browsers in June. Microsoft recently announced the next wave of titles coming to Xbox Game Pass for console, PC, and Xbox Cloud Gaming in the first half of August. Okay, we can leave all of that stuff there. Uh, but now, if you want to play Xbox Cloud Gaming on your PC through the Xbox app, you can. Obviously, it's been in, in browser for a little bit, but now more functionality, uh, more ways to get involved in the games. Um, thoughts, Bip? Yeah, what have we just been saying about Xbox and <laughs> and having good marketing and new, new ways of being able to play games? Just literally, just apply everything that we've just mentioned to this, and this is mad. Like, I've just signed into my Xbox account, and I'll see if I can see it. It's asking me that I need to update, so that's probably what that is. Um, so I'll be able to test that out and give you feedback maybe tomorrow or whenever uh, the next news story regarding Xbox is knocking about. But yeah, again, just taking everything that we've just mentioned about Xbox having great marketing and being for the players, regardless of what uh, but that's, but that was PlayStation's marketing for the last generation, but it genuinely is like Xbox is for anyone who wants to be able to play games everywhere. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um, just looking at the comments, Tito says, that's one thing I can't stand. Xbox apps and PCs are awful. Considering it's Microsoft, it's, it's inexcusable how bad their PC integration is. Sluggish, lacks features, badly designed. Do you agree, Bip? To a degree, no, because I don't, I haven't had a bad experience with it. I mean, the, the 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 ones on console are worse. Like trying to find your friends list on your console, especially when you're not someone who's played on your Xbox that often. Like trying to get into a party with them is just as bad as it is on the PlayStation Five. But on the PC, everything for me seems to be laid out exactly how I want. Um, if I needed to go into anything else, press Win and G, and and then that bar will come up, the overlay thing, which is pretty cool. I assume that's how you get into your party chats when you're playing PUBG with West. But the ex the actual Xbox app on PC, I don't, f I think works perfectly for what I want it for. Yeah, so I no, I don't agree, Tito. Yeah, get out of here, Tito. Uh, I I didn't agree, but I, I don't consider myself expert enough because Bib has used the Xbox app on PC much, much more than me. I hadn't used it at all until we played State of Decay, and I've only just started using the Windows game bar uh, or the Xbox game bar, whatever you want to call it, um, to use party chat playing with console players whilst i'm on pc or playing th on my p console through my pc i.e through a stream setup um so i've not used it but i found it fine enough uh that said do i think the xbox's dashboard is is exceptional no do i think the playstation dashboard is exceptional no i think neither um are are particularly great if i'm being honest in that sort of sense that said i mean i i judged the xbox pc experience based on how i would be playing console so when i was going through that i was thinking in my mind of as a console game and it kind of had everything i needed from a console experience but i didn't i've not really used it so i can't really say uh, i've just learned that i can switch between devices on my xbox controller by double pressing the sync button so i can quickly swap between mobile and console connection that's Inter cool interesting i did not know that uh i did not know that mad says maybe those are the features tito <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah anyway wrapping back to where we were just a few seconds ago um actually let me add xbox cloud gaming as a discussing topic on stream um this it's not massive news right now it doesn't necessarily talk to the entire world because xbox cloud gaming is playing games through the cloud on your pc if you've got a pc you will probably be playing games through steam or gog or epic or whatever um but you have the option of playing your xbox games uh there through the xbox games app you can just download them and play them this gives you the ability to play them through the cloud which already exists on your pc but only through browsers uh, obviously the reason the browser option was probably pushed uh, as a priority was because that browser option replicated uh functions that made it available on ios because the xbox app the game pass app um and cloud gaming app was not available through browser so they mm. pushed that first so long story short it's on pc so it's not massive news because it's kind of stuff that's already there however it's news 
And that's the thing, Xbox doing something new, doing something great, adding extra functionality. So you can play the stuff now through the app. Okay, the app that you use to play games that you've already got installed on your console, you can use it to play uh, on your PC. You can use it to play games that you don't have installed. Why? Just because it makes it easier for you as a user to get in there. So... Um, whether it, whether it, I mean, Petula says, well, agree to disagree, but I find Game Pass app and Xbox app poor. Bear in mind, Xbox app is being retired in favor of Games Pass, uh, Game Pass app, I think. It lacks clip integration and a lot of other features. Um, yeah, I've not really used it enough. I mean, for me, you, you are an authority that I'd have to bow down to because you are an Xbox player. I have an Xbox, but like I say, I use that to to stream twitch on it uh, and that's about it whereas my playstation i use a lot more i don't really use the xbox uh, xbox app that much either um but usability aside i mean I, I think that's that's not perfect either way so what i can say without any shadow of a doubt is xbox's ux is is, is not great and playstation's ux is not great if anyone's got a ps5 they can absolutely agree with me and if you disagree with me then get in the bin because <laughs> ps5's ux is trash it's getting better but it's still trash um mm -hmm. but ux aside in terms of functions and abilities and approachability and inclusivity xbox is definitely getting there the fact that they've got cloud gaming native within the xbox app on pc is another string to the bow whereas playstation still has game base what the fuck's game base how do i get into a party why have i left a party i didn't mean to leave and like i just wanted to end my call with bibi i didn't want to leave the party chat that we'd had existing with Go away, go away. Terrible. Yeah, not great. Anyway, I'll tell you what is terrible, Bib. Uh, banning someone what? on Twitch and not telling them why. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a strange decision, but apparently that is how Twitch has been working. I mean, I wonder if that's why we never found out what happened with Dr. Disrespect, why he got banned. He doesn't know. Uh, well, do you know what? If he got banned now... Well, chances are he would probably get some more information. As this article from Sean Murray at The Gamer says, Twitch will now tell suspended users what they did wrong. Uh, Twitch just announced uh, changes to its enforcement policy that involves telling streamers what they did to deserve a ban. It used to be that streamers would get banned from Twitch without any reason being given. You could email Twitch support for an explanation and they'd give you a vague description of what part of Twitch's terms of use was violated, but that was about it. However, that changes as of today. Twitch has just announced that going forward, suspended streamers will be given an explanation of what they uh, an explanation of what they did wrong along with their suspension notice. Quote, as of today, wrote Twitch, enforcement notifications sent to suspended users will include the name of the content and the date of the violation to ensure they have better clarity about what content is being actioned on. Twitch then provided an example of what such no uh, what such a notice might look like. This fictitious streamer apparently spammed uh, violative video content uh, which can include either copyrighted materials or creating an account solely to rebroadcast someone else's videos slash streams. There's clearly still some grounds for confusion as there's a wide gulf between, uplo between uploading copyrighted materials and rebroadcasting someone else's stuff. Uh, what's less confusing uh, follows the explanation. <clears throat> Twitch's example provides a specific video slash stream title and date when the violative content was posted, so at least banned streamers will have something to examine to see what they did wrong. Uh, embedded tweet, as of today, enforcement notifications sent to suspended users will include the name of the content and the date of the violation to ensure they have better clarity on what content is being actioned on, and then there's an example of what that would look like in a tweet from Twitch support. This new policy would have been especially useful. Oh, there we go. There you go. I did not even know this was at the end of the uh, mm. article, but this would have been especially useful for Dr. Disrespect, whose ban remains a mystery even over a year after it was handed down. We're still not sure what he did that warranted a lifetime ban, but whatever it was, it was heinous enough that even merely looking like Dr. Disrespect managed to get Z-Laner suspended from the Twitch Rivals tournament, although that ban was later rescinded as an overreaction. In other news, it's tweet, uh, cheaper to get Twitch subscriptions in the UK and Ireland thanks to pricing adjustments. That's something we um, haven't mentioned uh, uh, I don't know if it was included in, in one of baby streams, but I definitely haven't mentioned it. Um, it's now cheaper to sub. So it used to cost five quid. I think it costs four quid now to sub in the UK because um, rather than just replicating the dollars to pounds, uh, we've converted it. So dollars to pounds is actual value as opposed to straightforward conversion. So it should be cheaper for you to sub to your favorite channels like twitch.tv, whatever, you know, it's fine. <gasps> but um, people get notified now. If you've been banned, you'll get a reason why. Is that not common sense? Should yeah. should that not have been there all along? Yeah, it feels like this is been a long time coming. Considering, yeah, it's if you get banned, you kind of need to know why because it may only be like a three day ban, and then you want to know 
why you were banned so you don't do it again. Uh, you know, that's just common courtesy. But I'd love to know if if the doc actually ended up getting, like, if he was to log into his Twitch account now, what would happen? Can he, is, is his account no longer there at all? Like, he can't, he can't even log in with it? Or will it just will it trigger an email that goes through his email address and then it'll tell him why he's been banned? Or are they just going to avoid that altogether? I wonder if he could like treat his even though his case is a legacy case so to speak i wonder if he could file a why am i banned sort of email uh and see if they actually sent him a response as to what specifically it would be i mean the channel's not there the content's not there but surely they have to have what it was on record that said yeah. that's us assuming he doesn't know what he's been banned for because he said he doesn't know what it is externally there's all sorts of legal reasons why he might be saying that. He may know exactly what it is. Um, and that's kind of where I feel it is. I feel like whatever it is, Dr. Disrespect and his camp know why, and Twitch and their camp know why, but neither of them have said. So, like, obviously, the doc was talking about potential legal things, and he couldn't say too much. He had his legal representation in a meeting with him. Was it a PC gamer article? It was something mm. PC-focused. And he said, um, there's not much I can say. I don't want to say too much. And the, the, his PR guy was like, yeah, can't say anymore. You don't say anything on that. So I believe there's things that hasn't been said um, from either camp. And I, I do feel they both know what it is. I mean, we had people tweeting out um, saying they know why Dr. Disrespect had been banned. That's Shannon um, Sacriel's uh, partner, Shannon something or other. She tweeted the day saying she knew exactly why he's been banned. And and because of that, she doesn't see him getting a, a, a position on, on any other streaming platform going forward, but she can't share what it is. Um, and then deleted that and said, sorry, it looks like I'm just like clickbaiting and, and doing it for views and stuff like that and deleted it and never spoken about it ever again. But she used to work for Twitch, so she'll have contacts at Twitch. So surely her saying that isn't an accident. Like, oh, I got the wrong end of the stick. Mm -hmm. I believe Twitch and people at Twitch in the partnerships level know what the issue is. And I believe Dr. Disrespect's team will know what the issue is. So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, be interesting to see, though, whether this is something that he acts on. Will he use this to start moving conversations publicly? Because he's, I mean, he's, he's doing good on YouTube. His YouTube smashed it. He's not exactly yeah. uh, faulted in that sort of sense, but Twitch is a bigger platform for content creators that make live content. The doc can still do Twitch and YouTube content and still make money from both. The fact that he spent a couple of years on YouTube will have built that user base up massively, if he then just dropped out live video, uh, no videos on YouTube as opposed to live streams, I think he would still make money from YouTube hand over fist. And if he came back to Twitch, he could do both. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if at some point we see the doc back on Twitch because it's financially smart from him and for Twitch to get one yeah. of the biggest content creators back in the world. And if he's back on Twitch, a lot of the people that have never watched him but just think he's an arrogant dickhead might actually be able to look at his persona stuff and see, I'm talking to you, Tito. Or was it Tito? I can't remember <laughs> who it was. Someone someone recently said that they didn't, which, which I get, I get. is yeah. uh, If you don't watch people in spandex in WWE, then watching people in, in the equivalent spandex, to be fair, what he wears is pretty much spandex anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's pretty much the same. Um, uh, so yeah, Twitch now letting suspended users know what they did wrong. I mean, forget the doctor's dis disrespect and stuff like that anyway. Um, I just feel like this is this is overdue. It's needed. So it's a win for me. I will take this. But why was it not there already? Transparency. In a world of digital content creation, as a platform provider run by Amazon, and this is some, something we're partnered with, we're not, we're not scared to talk how we feel about twitch in that sort of sense because we're partners with them excuse me doesn't mean that we're not going to be honest but i feel like that should have been there all along transparency letting people know why like bibi says what if it's a part-time a temporary ban if you've got no information how are you gonna fix going forward how are you gonna learn and evolve uh and if you just take a channel offline without any um any reasoning yes it's not a state or a governmental avenue and yes it's not a public avenue twitch is a private company so mm -hmm. censorship doesn't really apply but it's still a form of modern day censorship and that's the thing a lot of people go are oh, you taking all down their social media channels that's censorship i mean it, it is but it isn't because twitch and facebook and youtube are all private companies they can do whatever they want it's just like me saying okay um Shut up if you're in my house. Yeah, but you're censoring me. Yeah, still my house. If you want to talk like that, fuck off somewhere else. Uh, so it's my house. I've got the rules. I own the rules. Censorship or not, it's, it, it, 
it's a loggerheads. Freedom of speech is is fine as long as you're in a public sphere. When you're somewhere private, then that changes slightly. Um, and that's that's a step closer towards it's a private company being more publicly minded, which which I like. Twitch giving more more information, being more transparent. I'd like to see that. Yeah. Um, Agreed. Exactly. Ad says he'll return. Ninja did. Twitch are in a bad place right now. A lot of drama and background happenings. Um, Tito says, yep, it was me. Not a WWE fan or Dr. Disrespect, but if you like watching sweaty, hairy men in spandex, you do you. I mean, have you not seen Bibi on stream doing his golf streams? That's pretty much how, how he is. Uh, sponsors slash, slash partners are pulling out. What, from Twitch? In in sort of what, what ways? Um, because that stuff always happens. Sponsors and partners are, are pulling out, but then again, we get... Back for Blood, having 100,000 concurrent views uh, for just having a Twitch drops focused stream. There's always stories telling you that Twitch is struggling with sponsors and partners in this time and the other, but Twitch is absolutely loving life as well at the same time. So take anything of like that with a pinch. Twitch would love to keep moving forward, and that is that is where it's the issue, is Twitch is, is having a wonderful time. Um, yeah, there's always there's always ongoings, there's always conversations, there's always sponsors pulling out of hot tub metas and fart stream metas and, and whatever. Um, but Twitch still churns, still makes money, still has tons of advertising, still has Twitch rivals and esports and all sorts of things, which obviously come with extra issues with cheaters and people live streaming cheating and, and stuff and whatever. Mm -hmm. But Twitch still enjoying life. However, they need to keep moving forward. And one of the best ways to move forward is to take one of the largest content creators in the world, bring him back onto your platform and unify make the world right. That's what happened when Shroud came back. That's what happened when Ninja came back. So you get that disrespect back as well massive spike dr disrespect's comeback stream if that was to happen um would be fecking huge the amount of concurrent yeah. viewers the amount of subs and gifted subs and donations it's, it'd be that'd be like a million dollar stream seven bigger sums yeah. easy absolutely anyway that stream and then not stream for years again and still make money do you know what i mean mad it Madness, absolute madness, absolute madness. Easy, easy. Anyway, we'll put a pin in that. We are well over time now. Um, we're probably about an hour and 10 minutes into the show. So thank you, everyone, that has stuck around from start to end. We appreciate you all being here. Let me give you a quick rundown of what the stories were for the day. Back for Blood, uh, the beta that took place over the weekend, reached nearly 100,000 concurrent players on Steam alone. We obviously don't get those details for console, but expect that to be just as big, if not bigger. Uh, as well as that, Xbox has confirmed there will be a Gamescom 2021 xbox stream that will be taking place at 6 p.m uk time uh, on tuesday august the 24th we will have a nice live watch along for you there uh, elsewhere sticking with xbox though uh, cloud gaming is now available on pc through the xbox app not just the browser which it was available through before and finally twitch will now tell suspended and banned users uh, what they did wrong why they earned said suspensions and bans nice a little bit of transparency uh, but that's it for us we are going to disappear this is our last stream for today obviously yesterday we did the scoop mm -hmm. and the jump in with some back for blood today there will be no afternoon stream because it's a tuesday and we do work things so yeah do feel free to stick around for a raid we're going to raid one of our friends of the channel find someone to drop some love on sticking around for that raid is good because you're not only dropping someone else's stream and make their day it's nice to see i mean trust me as as someone hosting a stream right now it's wonderful to have someone host you or raid you or drop into your stream it makes you feel nice and warm and fuzzy inside so stick around for that but as well as that it's good for yourself as well because you get channel points. If you stick around for the raid, you get extra channel points for this channel to spend on streams in the future. Nice. Nice. Before all of that, though, before we leave, Mr. Bib, is there anything else that you'd like to yes. add? Yes. Again, thank you very much for joining us for this episode of The Scoop. It's Tuesday. We've still got three more episodes left. That was some quick mastery there, Graham. Um, so, yeah, we've nice. got three more episodes. So if you want to help shape that those shows, there's two ways that you can do that. First of all, find us on social media. It's at Ice Cream Uploads across all major social media platforms or get involved with our Discord. Uh, if you are watching this in the, any of the on-demand services, go into the description below. You'll find all the links that you will need to get involved with the conversation. All we need from you is a URL plus your first impressions. We will then give you our first impressions on the very next show, which will be at what time tomorrow, Mr. Graham Day? Well, that will be at 10 a.m., <laughs> 10 a.m ish we will be live at 10 a.m ish tomorrow with the next episode of the scoop we will see you then but like i said stick around for the raid and then have yourselves a fantastic day and remember above all else stay stay frosty, stay frosty.